Hey, welcome to another episode of the Rock Fantasy Files. We're here with another one of our roundtable discussions, as we uh, we've been doing for anniversary albums, and this will be another one that's celebrating its 40th anniversary this year, or well, earlier in the year. Rush Moving Pictures, released on February 12, 1981, it was their eighth studio album, selling over five million records and reaching number three on the Billboard Top 200 here in the U.S. I've asked my, I guess it'll be knights at the table or the round table or personnel at the table tonight to pick their three favorite tunes and anything else they would like to say about this iconic, great Rush album. Tonight's panelists are Rick Labonte is back again from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. He's a singer songwriter. He has a band called The Formula. Glad to have him on tonight. We've got Tony Dio from the South again, uh, one of our regulars on the Rock Fantasy Files. We got Count Ralphus, who is our local Orange County, New York, Middletown area metal historian, and he's drinking uh, some kind of a beverage. We got Lou Calderola. He is a drummer from yeah. Limelight, the one of the area's Rush tribute bands that he's been doing that for about 17 years. So he's got some rush under his belt and he's also uh school of rock and uh he can he'll probably tell us a few other things that he's got in his back pocket there and we've got an, another one of our great guests and has done some books on the band and a uh, renowned author and journalist uh, martin popoff is back so uh i'd like to thank everyone for giving their time to the channel and uh we're here to talk about an album that I love and from one of my favorite bands, Rush. And I guess we can kick things off. Peter Pardo is planning on joining us. He's, of course, taping another episode on the Sea of Tranquility channel. And he should be here before we get done. We got our fingers crossed. So uh, I'm going to throw the ball to Rick to kick things off because he's on my upper right corner tonight. And a welcome to the show, Rick. And thank you for joining. All right. Well, if we're gonna be uh, waiting on Pete, I do a commercial, right? I start off with. Well, saying... you can get started, and we'll, <laughs> Pete will, we'll have a commercial before Pete starts. <laughs> yeah. So what I wanted to share with everybody is that, like everybody in this, you know, panel, we're I'm a Rush fan, and being a Canadian, they're like they like you know major major icon for us, right? Uh, in fact, when I was a kid how I discovered Rush was just the graffiti of Rush, of people writing it on their tech books and their hallways and the bathroom walls or even on painted fence on your way to high school or whatever. And, uh, and so it just, you know, the curiosity was there. And so I just wanted to say, uh, Rush is a, you know, big time hero for us, so close to Toronto. We, we're so glad that a lot of Canadians don't get the, the, the success that Rush did. People can appreciate them um, no matter what decade. So that was fantastic. So I just want to share everybody that uh, being a fan of Martin's work from the Hawaii Heat books and everything that I've been getting from so far, I knew if he was going to do Rush, I had to get a, a piece of that. So what I'm going to do right here is just kind of close my uh, background for a second. I just want to change it so we can see this. Okay, so the three books in this order. Oh, hold on. <laughs> it looks on. even cooler. <laughs> now it looks even wilder. He looks like he's coming yeah. out of the archway, right? <laughs> he got black makeup on. Anyway, <laughs> the anthem is the first, you know, the first uh, few albums before they get into the limelight, which opens with moving pictures going through the 80s. And then you get Driven, uh, which is going through. Uh, the 90s up to the present day and so with a lot of uh, history here and what I like about how Martin did this uh, book you felt like you were eavesdropping on the conversation you felt like you know uh, that the um, you just felt like the like you were the fly on the wall and knowing all the series of events that happened and to me it's a must if you're a Russ fan and you want to kind of get the inside scoop this is it it seems like you would have to be a good buddy to know Russ like this, like they tell the story, and Martin was that guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick, very cool. Awesome. So, Rick, like you forgot this one. Like you got to get this one. There, 
Yeah, that you one's out of print now. <laughs> yeah, Rick, you got to get the illustrated history one. The way okay. the way Martin put together his illustrated history books, it's so great because he finds backstage passes and buttons and t-shirts from that time era and tour books and the research that he does on these illustrated books he's the judas priest one and black sabbath one amazing so look out for any martin popoff illustrated ones i want to try to find that one, one still is that, that's probably yeah. out of print right martin yeah that's the original right. 2013 and then it came out in 2016 with a die cut cover and that's out of print as well so that's the one i get asked for all the time this this one by the same publisher is still in print, Rush album by album. Oh. And that's the one where I've got a panel like you're doing here, Steve. And we and I go cool. through and we do a QA on every single studio album. So that one is still in nice. print. And that's also by Voyager. And it's also, you know, one of these fair, fairly Excellent. like very illustrated ones, right? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go really same. old school. I've got this yeah. contents under pressure. Yeah, and that's out of print. So so that turned into the trilogy that Rick uh, mm -hmm. showed there, which is now now available on uh paperback. Mm -hmm. So the trilogy, people don't know this, but the anthem hardcover is all gone. I'm the last person with any of those, but wow. um they're all gonna be all gone and then they're all gonna be replaced by just these uh these soft covers. So it's that's how that works. still available in some kind of cover though, you know. Yeah. Well, anyhow, Rick, let's start. Uh, well, anyhow, you got more something on the shower, so we can start talking a little bit about your. Oh, it's all good. Yep. Hey, you're back out of the archway too. We can see you again now. <laughs> you, you were like a monster coming out. Somehow, you know? I try to take it out, and it put me into psychedelic thing. So I don't know. So uh, one of the things I could say about this album is uh, the, I always felt like they had the back in the vinyl days, right before I went to cassettes and CDs. Uh, they have the ultimate side A. Like you put on that side A, the, everything was flawless. Like it was like the perfect side. And my, remember back in the day, you used to stack albums on top of albums, then they would drop. So if you were playing pool, pinball, video games, or hanging out at a party, you would hear a side of the album at a time. And this is one of those uh, always there because everybody knew that it was a winner. You're not going to get no uh filler it was always killer all the way through and that was one of the memories i had uh as a young guy getting into this band but what got it on the radar as far as audio or how song goes with permanent waves and spirit of radio was being played a lot in detroit radio so it created a big buzz uh among among all of us hearing that there was a new album coming out called moving pictures and so uh needless to say um, I got to, you know, got it first way when not really a lot of it would be played. And then for a kid like myself at that time, you would go to roller skating rink. They played Tom Sawyer, Elmer, the whole everything. They played the whole album half the, half the time. So you end up becoming a real big fan and the radio started picking it up. And, you know, so if I were to give my uh, three. Uh, it would be that first side. And I know it's overplayed. I, I like the CD world that I can play all the way through. They could kind of album I might throw on for a good 45 minute ride to the next gig I'm doing. Um, um, but it's in, in my DNA now. So I would say my top, in that order, Tom Sawyer will be number three, Red uh, Barchetta number two, and YYG, that still pumped me up. I feel like running. I feel like exercising. When I hear that tune, it gets my adrenaline going. It's one of those songs I'll probably drive a little faster um, with that <laughs> tune going on. Uh, but in, in all fairness, it was amazing for me as a kid, as a new listener, because at that time, I always thought people played live on album. When I learned that seeing all these instruments and knowing there's only three guys, that's when I learned about dubbing, that they, how can these guys do this all? But what made me you know, in total awe is to see a video about the, uh, um, of them performing these songs live uh, years later and seeing that three guys did exactly that. Uh, very hard for me to notice that they were actually dubbing because they did it so flawless. And to me, that's when I would join the, the Rust camp. I was just blown away watching three guys pull off all that music. So, cool. Very nice. What number are you going to throw at this one, Rick? What's your rating? Uh, my rating, well, oh, perfect. 
It's the perfect album for me. Perfect. I, in fact, I felt like for Russ, 10 out of 10, because I think that was the bar that set so high they were never able to achieve that since then. You know, I ever felt like that. They threw it all in. That was the, the peak. Don't get me wrong. I loved a lot of stuff they did after that mm -hmm. in the 90s especially. Uh, but I think when they would return them back to form in the 90s, they try to give a snapshot of this album all the time bringing that that you want it to be accessible but brilliantly cool with all the passages and stuff like that so yeah 10 out of 10 for me excellent excellent so thanks for joining us and we'll swing around back and see that talk a little bit more later but uh thanks for joining us tonight uh we're gonna go to count ralphus because i'm sure he's gotta leave us soon and go to work anyhow but here he is ralph welcome back He's got his rush flag. That's like a rush, like a flag you'd hang in your window and drive around with that plastic hook on. Yeah, yeah. It's Is a it? One. It's a car flag. I never saw a rush car flag. I actually got it the last time I seen him live. They had it on the table there for in the merch section. Oh wow! So. I missed that. So uh, yeah, this uh, this album is the first album I I got into by Rush. I mean, it, I was only eleven years old when it came out, but uh. When I was about, and I didn't get it right away, of course, but uh, when I was about 14, I picked up this point. Massive of metal. Wow. It had a lot of, we had Triumph on there, and it had it had Tom Sawyer on here, and it ended mm -hmm. up being one of my favorite songs on the album. And uh, that's when, after I, I fell in love with Tom Sawyer on, on this, that I ended up getting moving pictures. But uh, so yeah, for number three, it, I was back and forth between the camera eye and red bruschetta, but I guess I got to go with red bruschetta. Um, and uh, my number two, everybody was talking about all the instrumentals on the Sea of Tranquility's Hudson Valley Squares the other day. Yeah. And a lot of people bring up La Vila, La Vila Strangiato, but uh, no one really mentioned YYZ. Only Pete mentioned it late in the honorable mentions. And I always thought this was one of the best in instrumentals ever. Like you just want to play air drums to it and it just yep. rocks and it's so, so catchy, so memorable, stays in your head for days afterwards. But then, yeah, my number one has to be the song that got me into Rush and that would be Tom Sawyer, probably the most played out song wow. by them, but I never get sick of it. It's such a memorable riff. It, it's such a great vibe and uh, I've been a fan ever since. That's it. What, and right what number are you giving us for it? One oh, to yeah, ten. I know. I keep giving out. I keep giving out tens to everything, but you know, I agree to Tough. come on we got the go because we're talking about albums that I love. So another ten for me. We're always picking these really good albums from forty years ago too, so it's hard to give them a very poor rating. No one's giving it a one. Maybe you know. <laughs> But maybe that's a dumb thing we do with giving the numbers for these anniversary shows. No, it's, it's good. It, I, I, I rate it in their own catalog for something like this, but it's one of their best. I mean, they got so many great albums, but it's definitely in the top three or four for me, you know? It's in your top three of the rest of that world, I think. Can everyone, yeah, is everyone hearing me all right? I had some mic problems uh, in the last episode that sound better now. Than... No, nope, we're good. Okay, good. I got to be up close to the screen. Um... We're going to drop over to Lou, who's been on the episode in the past. And uh, we got Lou here. And, of course, he knows a little bit about Rush. So it's, I'm, it's an honor to have you on the show tonight. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, it's always a blast getting to do these with you, you and the crew. Um, and, yeah, just... Um, First, I'll just uh, start by adding on to what you mentioned before is, yeah, I, you know, I, I play with Limelight, the Rush Tribute, who are, we're actually now in our 20th year. Um, and we're just, wow. just kicking off, kicking off 20 years. And from what I understand from doing some other recent Zoom things, Rush related Zoom things, uh, we are the longest performing same lineup of a Rush Tribute on the planet at the moment, apparently. So, uh, and uh, just do a little pimping here that, that was from, this is the Neil Peart um, volume two, The Stars Look Down uh, tribute CD that oh, was wow. endorsed by his family. His sister and mom had a little bit to do with that with a nice little inside from them that we were lucky 
to be our version of Anthem is track number one on this. So, um, and this is, a, this all goes to uh, cancer benefits in his name. Um, still available online, produced by Steve Brown, who, thank you, Steve, for including Limelight and getting us involved in this. It was an honor to be part of that. Um, so yeah, the, you know, continuing with the limelight stuff, we're happy to get into year 20. And when you mentioned having me on for this, I was definitely on board. Uh, this album, you know, as a drummer, and when it came out, I, you know, similar to what Ralph has said, I was probably, I guess, 12, 13, let's see. Yeah, I was like 13 or so when Moving Pictures came out. And though I had heard from the radio, you know, growing up, I, re I remember, oh, I, I've heard that song Fly By Night before. I've heard that song Closer to the Heart before, but I didn't really know Rush. And then a buddy of mine, you know, Moving Pictures is fresh out. And he comes up to me in school and says, hey, um, you know, Lou, you, you play drums. You got to You got to listen to this out. You got you, you got to listen to this. And he's like, here, take this home and, and check this out. And I just remember, you know, you drop the needle on track one and it's Tom Sawyer. And whether you're a Rush fan, whether you're a music fan, whether you're a drummer, that was just like, I was just kind of like, oh, oh, this changes my opinion of, of what a drummer can do. You know, Steve, we talked about this a little bit in the other episode, but yeah, that just Tom Sawyer hitting me first when someone saying, oh, oh you know, you're a drummer, you'll appreciate this. And you get to those middle breaks and that set. And it was just like, kind of like, wow, dr drums can drums can be that forward. They can be that almost like a, a lead. So that just changed everything for me musically right there. Um, and that, you know, that that was what really got me going on Rush from there. Then it was like, OK, I, I got to get. Uh, I, I think I got all the all the world's a stage next, then caress a steel and then started filling in all the holes and, you know, and it, it, that never stopped. Um, so the tracks, this was a man, this is like everybody you guys were saying, this is like the perfect album. I mean, so how in the hell do I narrow this down to three and then try and put them in an order? Ah, that's really tough. Um, I, I thought about this ever since I saw you post that we were going to do this. And I think every time I revisited this subject changed my, my decision. So I'll say this now and we'll probably change it in an hour. Um, for number three, I guess I got to go. I was ah, is it is it camera eye? Is it vital signs? Those two. I just I just dig the, the rhythmic qualities of those songs. Um, it really made me, I think those songs are what really made me notice the sound of someone's bass tone and Getty's bass sound on that album. Um, so I'll say number three, uh, Camera Eye, just by a little over Vital Signs. Number two would have to be YYZ for a lot of the reasons we've mentioned and everybody will say, it's just, it's the perfect instrumental in a couple minutes. It's, it's got everything, you know, La Villa's La Villa. But love, you know, it's like YYZ was the streamlined, perfect instrumental. And then number one, although I, I love all the songs, number one, I'd have to say Tom Sawyer, just because it changed my view of drums, music and bands at the time that I heard it and, you know, became a huge part of everything I did with music going forward from then. So, yeah. 10 out of 10 rating pretty easily for me on that one. Oh. I guess we're going to move over to... That's quite a Mark, workout I'm going to ask a couple more questions to you, Lou, before, <laughs> before we okay. kick, kick off tonight. But uh, we'll go back to you, and I want to ask you a couple of questions about uh, Limelight. And uh, Martin, welcome back. Okay. All right. So, so this album, uh, you know, I've, I've talked about this album, I'm sure in various places in different ways, but I love this question about what are your top three songs in order? It's kind of interesting. Cause I think it makes you, by the way, there's your, uh, there's your fully signed version of it. So that's uh, one of the coolest things I own. Um, but, uh, one thing that I, uh, I think this really brings in that debate that a lot of people have about uh, songs that are the huge hits that you've heard too many times versus mm -hmm. the other stuff. And this album really throws that into relief because you've got 
as 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 Rick so eloquently pointed out, you've got you've got four in a row, all killer, no filler. Uh, you know, four four of Russia's biggest songs in a row are right there on on one side of one album, which is crazy, right? Um, yeah. But so I I uh, my order changed a little bit, uh, just like yours, Lou, a little bit. Um, I, I thought, you know, I'm, I really want to go look at that dark side of the album and, and figure out, uh, you know, are those ones going to come up? And I thought, which hunt can be a little, a little slow, a little sluggish. Vital Signs is almost like a little too shocking and a little too reggae, maybe. But the camera eye, it's the last time they did a song this long. It's a perfect prog song. It's got so many cool parts in it, some heavy parts, some not heavy parts. That's the really cool thing about this album. This one really sounds like a, like a power trio all the time, even though even though they're not playing heavy all the time. Uh, um, Alex is always uh, playing distorted guitar all the time, but uh, a lot of times it's melodic. And it's strummy, but there are a lot of riffs as well. You just, you really feel the threeness of, of the band on this one um, versus, versus uh, I'd say, I'd say all of the ones before all the way back to, well, actually really all of them. For, I think you feel the threeness because it's really, really proggy, but I, I really don't feel like the arrangements are, are, are too incredibly wacky on this. I think that's why it was a hit album. It's very immediate. So Okay, to make a long story short, I'll go with the camera eye number three, um, just because it is just a beautiful, plush, proggy song. For some reason, it reminds me of those sensibilities that you, you feel about Genesis, uh, more so than Yes, actually. Uh, to me, it's a Genesis Rush song, not a Yes Rush song. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with that. And then, uh, and then, you know, YYZ to me has a ceiling of six out of 10 because it's an instrumental. I don't know, man. I'm just so against instrumentals. I just, I don't care nearly enough. So it's going to have a ceiling on it. So I'm ruling that out. I'm, I'm going to rule out Red Barquetta. Um, Limelight, I think has to be the number two for me because uh, of it's, it's such a, such an emotional song and so melodic and well put together in it. And it really proved even more than the spirit of radio that that you can uh, that you can drop beats and add beats and be progressive and play in odd time signatures and still write a poppy accessible song. So that one is not so much a riff; it's chords, right? It's 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 more Angus Young than it's uh, than it's like a riff, right? It's yeah. it's Rush stacking chords like pancakes, right? Uh, and that's the beauty of it. Uh, and then I'm gonna have to go with Tom Sawyer, the most iconic Neil Peart riff uh, uh, fill of all time. And, uh, you know, he's playing fast. The other guys are playing slow. It's really interesting that way. My good buddy, Pai Dubois, who I'm working with right now, we're trying to get his poetry together, maybe make a poetry book for Pai. Um, but Pai is the co-writer of this one. And uh, what is it? Four other Rush songs, I think. Five in total, something like that. Um, but this is the big one, right? Um, so it's cool. It's got a little bit of that Pai Dubois sensibility to it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's just the, the, the it's a really perfect, courageous song to have as the first song in the album being slow. Right. Um, and I think that's really cool as well. So it, it's to me, it's it's the most airtight construction of a song on the album where you could say it's like the, you know, the platonic ideal of great songwriting is more in that song than anything else uh, on the album. So there you go. Camera Eye, uh, Limelight, uh, Tom Sawyer. Oh, and I'll give this album uh I think I'll give this album a, uh, a 10 out of 10, um, wow. you know, and, and I don't think I would do that for almost, well, I, I, I probably would do that actually for another couple maybe, or maybe even three more. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I probably would, but, but it's, yeah, it's, it's definitely a 10. You can't fault it. It's funny when you were talking, Steve, have you ever heard anybody say a bad word about this album? I don't think I ever have, which is pretty funny. Right? Maybe maybe uh, Sid maybe Sydney and Taylor. Um, yeah, well, yeah, you got to not like, like Rush, Rush. right? <laughs> but uh, but yeah, it's just everybody everybody who's who's halfway a fan loves this album. So there you go. Right, and like you said, it's so um, um ear candy, like it's sonically that that you do hear everybody all the moving parts of three guys doing all that so evenly, like no one drowned it out in the mix. So yeah, that's what makes it so uh, powerful. Cool. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. Somebody just showed up. Look at it. He's Absolutely. only done 18 yeah. shows today, so you know we got to cut him some slack. What's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Uh, Welcome, Pete. What's up, Pete? He got here in time. We got 
you got one or one guy in front of you. So you got here in time. So you you, you ought to watch Martin on tape though, because Martin just got finished. And, uh, that's all right. That's all right. And uh, Martin Martin will give me the summary on uh, Friday morning. So yeah, okay. oh, yeah, you guys are got your Friday with morning. the weather. With the weather. <laughs> there you go. That's the most important part of it, right, Rick? <laughs> and uh, we're going to keep the squares moving or the, the circle going here with Tony Dio. Tony, welcome. Always good to be here, guys. Um, when Steve asked me about joining in on this, I was like, well, you know, moving pictures probably isn't one of my favorite rush albums. I actually really like the early stuff. Is That's always my favorite. I always seem to gravitate back to the first two and 2112 the most. And I love the All the Worlds of Stage live album. That's probably my favorite rush album of all time. And, um, but thinking back, you know, um, I listened to this today. I actually listened to it this evening during dinner. And it's the first time I've played it in quite a while. It is a really, really good record. I just always liked side one. I never cared much for side two. Okay. Um, but it is, it is a great record. It's got a lot of great songs on it. It is the first stuff that I remember hearing from Rush as a, as a kid, uh, early teens. Um, we got, I've told a story before we got MTV, I think in 1983, and they would always show the the limelight video, you know, where they're in the studio and the, the live clips from the, from that tour, from moving pictures tour days to show that concert on Saturday night concerts on MTV. So I was familiar with a lot of the stuff from there, you know, and then I kind of just went from there and got into Rush and kind of went back into the old stuff later on. Then I ended up, like I said, liked them a whole lot more. Um, but if I'm going to pick my top three, I've, I've got to go. Um, number three has got to be Tom Sawyer because that's probably the first song I ever remember hearing from Rush. And uh, I remember, you know, uh, I don't even think I owned it until what Ralph mentioned, that Masters of Metal compilation that came out i think that came out in like uh 83 or something like that and, uh, yeah but it was it had so many good songs but yeah i just you know i played the crap out of that record all the time or the tape that is and um so tom sawyer is just great and i remember hearing it at the skating rink and places as well um number two is definitely gonna be uh yyz um just incredible instrumental just so much so much good playing on that uh and Number one has got to be Limelight. Just that riff is iconic. When you hear it, it just comes on and you just kind of stop what you're doing or you air guitar to it or something. You know, it's just, it's so cool. And like I said, that video is really cool when they're in the studio recording and all. And it kind of, it's like they're in the current time period of 1981 or whatever, recording the, the clip, um, recording the song. And then it like flashes back to all the, where they're in the Luke Skywalker robes and all that stuff in it. And all too. It's kind of cool. You know, but uh but yeah um so i'll give it like i said i've never been too big on side two so i'm gonna say i'm gonna give it a six out of ten from from me for my life okay and uh thanks for it and uh i guess i'm gonna give my little picks and then we'll close out with pardo and get a couple of closing statements on moving pictures from our panelists and uh well it's tough uh even as we we're talking about the songs, I think some of them might have changed in my head, but I'm going to keep what I've written down. Uh, as an honorable mention to start off with, I'm going to go with Vital Signs. Uh, what Martin said about it, it does have almost like a, a reggae kind of thing to it, where it's just kind of flowing and that whole like a tired mind become a shape shifter. Everybody needs a mood lifter. You just get caught up in it. And I, I really love that song. So I'm going to put that in as an as a honorable mention. My number three on the album is Red Barchetta. I've always been into cars and races and souped up cars. And this is like, like a great story about this guy, you know, going and finding this old car, of course, a gas powered car. And he's like an outlaw driving it. Something might, we might be seeing in the near future here nowadays. <laughs> It's like, the, you know, you never know. I was like, oh, shit, I got a 75 Chevy. It runs on gasoline stuff. Can I drive it before the cops pull me over, you know? But uh, Red Marchetta is going to come in at number three. I love the song Witch Hunt. So I actually used to have that as a, on my phone as a ring back. And people would call me. And it's like, wow, you're a Rush fan. You got Witch Hunt on there. And I'm like, yeah, it's a great song. No one's picked it tonight. So uh, 
and I'm, number one is camera eye with me and when i got to see him a lot on the uh, time machine tour just that was one of the highlights of that set to me especially with their video and everything they had like you know in the whole thing just watching camera eye i thought that was like and plus it was a song you hadn't heard you always hear the other songs i, I used to go see them every tour starting with hemispheres to the civic center and i still think that's like the best concert i may have ever seen in my life so uh i've been a huge rush fan and i'm very excited it's not officially released that uh the next stern pinball machine i could get in trouble for saying this but i don't work there so who cares and if i'm wrong shoot me it's gonna be rush it's gonna be a rush pinball machine so uh nice. a lot of people are like rush what's that I, I get people in the pinball industry going like I don't even know who that is. Or like, why are you making more dad rock? I'm like, this is going to be a great game. And uh, and I've already, you know, chatted about that. If we get that, we have to have Limelight, Lou, Lou's band, play a party and bring that pinball out. I think it'll be a good time somewhere so we can pull that off. So uh, I'm going to go hop, hop over to Pete Pardo. Uh, we're lucky enough that we got to sneak him in. Today. He's another huge Rush fan like I am. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love this band, and uh, I'm happy that I was able to drop in before you guys got done. Uh, you know, I've I've had a long time relationship with this album and this band. I actually was into Rush before this album came out. Uh, I was, you know, the first Rush album I ever bought was All the World's a Stage, and then I got Hemispheres and Farewell of Kings, and then Permanent Waves, and I really liked those albums a lot. I think I grew to like them even more. But this is the album that kind of pulled me in completely into the world of Rush. I mean, everybody I knew was listening to this album. This album was a huge seller. It was songs were on the radio. I saw them on this tour for the first time. And I just listened to this nonstop. But interestingly enough, it's almost like this is like a tale of two eras here. When I first was really getting into this album heavy, I played side one to death all the time. And I really only listened to Witch Hunt a lot on side two. I kind of ignored the other two songs. I never liked Vital Signs. And I always dug Camera Eye, but I didn't start appreciate, appreciating Camera Eye until I got older and I started to listen to more prog stuff and like the longer, longer songs. But I find now, I still love this album, but I find when I want to listen to moving pictures, I blow off side one and I listen to side two. Uh -uh. And now I absolutely love Vital Signs. And I really appreciate the camera eye. And I find out that I still have a love affair with Witch Hunt. So my top three, if you were to ask me, you know, all those 40 years ago, I would have easily said probably Tom Sawyer and either, you know, YYZ or Red Barchetta and Limelight right? in, you know, three of those easily and maybe Witch Hunt. Today, Witch Hunt number one, Limelight number two, and probably YYZ number three, but Vital Signs is right there. It's right there. Okay. I, I really like Vital Signs. That's probably the one I listen to the most now. And it's such a great song. And back then I was like, ah, it's just kind of reggae garbage, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> now it's, it's just such a great, catchy song, great instrumentation. And it's just, and the whole ending of it is great. It's awesome track. Awesome track. I love the production on this album. Uh, it, it's just the songwriting is amazing. The playing is amazing. And, you know, this, I still, I think, really love this the albums that came before this i love that period of rush and this was the transition album into signals because mm. signals happened because of what was started on this album and you know a lot of people when signals came out they're like all right that's it I'm, I'm off this train but now even signals i like a hell of a lot more than i ah. did back in the day love signals is great but yeah this is classic absolute classic i still usually call this my favorite rush album even though i probably listened to Farewell of Kings and Hemispheres and Permanent Waves and 2112 and, you know, Caress of Steel, which is amazing, mind boggling. Yeah. Uh, but I still, this is still holds a real, like, special place in my heart. Always will. There you have it. What number are you giving it? One to oh, ten. Uh, out of 10? Um, geez. 12. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't know, nine, nine and a half. I don't know. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's a perfect album. So I, I could give it a 10 out of 10 and not sneeze about it, but it's at least 9.5 out of 10, at least. It's, it's classic. It's, you know, there's, there's no, there's not a bad moment on the whole album. It's, it's perfect. Perfection. I agree. Who on the panel tonight did get to go see uh, the Time Machine tour. Everyone? I've I seen there. many toys. Time yeah. Machine, yeah. I think I worked that show. I worked a couple of shows in the early 2000s. What year was that? That was a uh, good question, Ralph. You're or Martin. Well, time 13, 15-ish, 14-ish, something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I saw. Or yeah, for 13, 13 ish, maybe. No, I, did, I did I did Vapor Trail Trails tour. I know I can't remember, but I worked a couple of shows. That's the only time I've ever seen Rush is when actually show. Time Machine Tour was 2010 to 2011. Hmm. I'm looking it yeah, up. Oh, okay, yeah. Time, yeah, that was I, I was lucky enough to get to watch that from side stage at Mohegan Sun from oh. getting to know that was shortly. Um, geez, that that might have been around. I can't it was somewhere that, that was either right before or right after Martin. I had gotten to meet you at one of the rush cons. It was right before or right after time machine and then well um, michael it was michael mossbach uh met us at mohegan sun and was like hey you guys want to watch set two from side stage uh, <laughs> yeah okay yeah. so we uh, just i stood like right a couple feet off the side of getty looking down getty and neil's side and watched uh, set two of time machine wow. from there don't suppose you ever got to like sound check on Neil's drums or anything, did you? No, Michael no? was nice enough to bring us around to check out the stage. And we got to go not while Neil was on the bus, but he took us on to show us his riding bus and the gear and everything while they were yeah. while they were eating. But he was like, ah, you know, if I thought he would let us up, I'd bring you. He was like, but I didn't get clearance for that. So uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll take you where I can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Funny. Lou, uh. What are some of uh, on your band Limelight? What song? What songs do you guys perform from Moving Pictures? That was a question I had for you. The entire album. Um, you, you do the whole we, album, okay? Yeah, we haven't like you know. I mean, there's it's really been a thing where we've done that you know predominantly at like anniversary shows. I mean, we pretty much usually always play side one, but sometimes mm. we'll swap out Y Y Z for La Villa. But we, Tom Sawyer, Red Barchetta, Limelight, they're pretty much always in the set. Um, yeah. so we, we do Witch Hunt quite a bit because we like playing Witch Hunt. That's a lot of fun to play. Um, we'd probably do Witch Hunt with the other three the most. But like Camera Eye and Vital Signs typically get pulled out at like anniversary shows or we need you to play for three hours, you know, kind, of, kind of stuff. <laughs> but they're, they're all on the list, though. Excellent. Excellent. Martin, do you have anything you'd like to add about the album? Yeah, I do. Uh, Pete mentioned once we should do a, a show of misheard lyrics. And on this one, there's a funny one that I always remember in my head. Living in the Fish Islands. Yes. <laughs> From Limelight. <laughs> Living in the Fish Islands. <laughs> you know, it's Fish Islands, right? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's a funny one from this one. But I can never remember it. When Pete asked me, I said, oh, I can't remember. And he says, oh, make a list, make a list of them, you know, as you go along. But I, I haven't been making a list. Because, the fish but island, it, it yeah. does come up, I think, about but yeah. We'll do it one of these days, Martin. One of these Living days. in the Fish Islands. <laughs> Sounds oh, like a peaceful uh, place. That magical yeah. place, right? <laughs> hey, Pete, one of the guys. What's that, Steve? You were cutting out. Uh, I'm cutting out again. I'm having problem. I guess I had a problem with this on Monday. Also, I don't. Yeah, that. we need to get you a new microphone, Steve. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what's going. I think it's my laptop's going wacky. But uh, anyhow, we were talking earlier. Count Ralphus, I think, brought it up or someone that we need to do a the best books of Martin episode. Yeah. <laughs> I got like a couple shelves of them over there. So <laughs> Do that. Ralph and, and in fact, Rick there's one on its way to me as we speak, right, Martin? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been sent. Yeah. Well, I guess I'd like to thank everyone for giving their time to the Rock Fantasy Files, and uh, I, I'm finding if I don't stay way up front here, you can't hear me. So you have to see my <laughs> nose hairs even tonight. <laughs> but uh, thank everyone for joining us tonight, and uh, hit subscribe so you know what's going on if you like the channel, and uh, mention your favorite rush songs from this and any of your moments of seeing moving pictures or
tour or anything else rush related and uh please uh check out martin's website and uh buy some books and uh check out lou's website and go check out limelight and all that good stuff and uh pete pardo see a tranquility and everything good so bang any any closing mo any closing statement for anyone else no all right Stay cheers home. all <laughs> okay